Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a brief video on the inverse gamma distribution. If you haven't seen it already, you may want to go back and watch the video on the gamma distribution before you watch this one on the inverse gamma distribution. The inverse gamma distribution has two parameters. It has a shape parameter that I'm going to call alpha, and it has a scale parameter that I'm going to call beta. A random variable has an inverse gamma distribution if its probability density function looks like this. So the first thing to note is that indicator function that tells you the support for this random variable is for positive real numbers. And the second thing to note is the kernel of this distribution, which has the random variable raised to the negative a, sorry, negative alpha minus one power, and then e to the negative beta divided by that random variable. This gamma function that's out front is defined by this integral right here. And we will refer to an inverse gamma random variable using this notation with a capital I, capital G for inverse gamma with the shape and scale parameter, in this case, alpha and beta. All right, taking a look at some example probability density functions, the inverse gamma distribution has the same general shape for its probability density function, no matter the values of the shape and scale parameters. You'll always see the PDF start at zero, zero, and uh, a quick ramp up there, and then a single mode, and then a slow decay on the right-hand side. Uh, some of these, especially on the top, are cut off. I didn't expand the scale enough, but that's partly so you can see what's happening at the bottom, but they all have that same form. The mean and variance of an inverse gamma distribution uh, is can be found using the PDF. So the expectation here is beta divided by alpha minus one. And if you're thinking about this, you might notice something seems a little odd here because what happens if alpha is less than one? Remember, alpha only needed to be greater than zero. So if it happens to be between zero and one, well, you'd have a negative expectation. And that seems a little weird because we know the support for this random variable is for strictly positive reals. Maybe even weirder if alpha happened to be one, we would get, say, an infinite expectation. And so this formula is actually only valid for alpha being greater than one. For alpha less than or equal to one, we don't actually have an expectation. Similarly, for the variance, uh, we have the formula that's here. It's what beta squared divided by alpha minus one squared. Uh, times alpha minus two. And similarly, if alpha was less than two, we would get a negative uh, variance using this formula. And so this formula is only valid for alpha being greater than two. Now, uh, I mentioned at the beginning that this is related to the gamma distribution or that you should go and watch the video for the gamma distribution. And so the way that it's related is that if you have a gamma distribution with a shape parameter alpha and importantly a rate parameter lambda, then if you take its inverse or its reciprocal, you'll have an inverse gamma distribution with parameters alpha and gamma, so the shape and now the scale. And similarly, you can do the reverse. So if you start with an inverse gamma, you end up with a gamma distribution. So the key here is going to be making sure that you have the right parameterization, right? In this case, when you have the rate parameterization, it stays the same. If you happen to prefer the scale parameterization, then in the gamma, you need to make adjustments. So a very quick summary here of what we talked about. We introduced this inverse gamma random variable. It has two parameters, both of which need to be positive. The PDF uh, shows you that you have a uh, support over the positive reals. The expectation here is beta divided by alpha minus one, and that's only valid for alpha values greater than one. And the variance similarly is this formula for alpha greater than two. All right, the next slide we're going to talk about, or next video, we're going to talk about the student's t distribution. Hope to catch you there.